Thank you. Okay, I know what you're thinking. How does she walk in these shoes? <laughs> I get it all the time. In fact, I used to walk in these shoes all the time. Like many of you, I used to get up every day, take care of the kids. But on this day, something was different. You know, my head was hurting a little bit more than normal. My right side actually started going numb. So I knew I had to get to the emergency room really quickly. Now, when I got there, they took a look at me, and I went straight back. That said a lot. After hours of poking and prodding and x-rays and questionable responses to everything that was going on, the doctor said, well, before he said it, actually, he locked eyes with me. And then he said, don't freak out. So what do you do when someone says, don't freak out? You freak out. So what he told me was that my brain was actually slipping into my spinal cord. Now, we knew that we had to move quickly. We knew that we had to have brain surgery. We had no idea what was going to happen next, but we knew we had to do it quickly. It was a really hard time for our family, actually. And so, I'm a little quirky, but at this point, I thought, hey, you know that phrase that people use all the time, the one that goes like this, uh, it doesn't take brain surgeon. Well, in this case, it did take a brain surgeon. So, due to complications during my surgery, I actually lost the ability to walk, talk, and work. And so we had to figure out what happened next. You know, my family wanted to help. The doctors and the therapists and everyone put this plan together, this plan for independence. I mean, even my family members were trying to help me. But you know, I, I didn't really know how to be independent. I mean, like, we're all taught, right? We're all taught at a very early age. You know, we walk and we want to go to school, we want to drive a car, get our first apartment. You know, we're taught to be independent at a very early age. But you know, I never had to actually think about being independent. So we had to figure this thing out especially when my youngest child at the time asked his teacher, is my mommy going to die? I totally lost it. I knew at that point we had to figure something out. What we did next wasn't really something we were expecting, but I did realize at that time that my husband and I, you know, the power couple, you know, doing all these great things, had to actually take on this different relationship. My husband actually had to take care of me. And I knew that my strong and wonderful husband didn't have a problem with it, but I felt a lot of shame and guilt that he had to actually take complete and total care of me. It was really difficult, but I had to stop competing with my old self. I had to stop trying to get back to where I was going and move forward to where I needed to be. Well, I realized and our family realized that it's not really about being independent. It was about independability. Being able to be comforted by and supported by your family in times of need. We realized in that moment that there wasn't really anything that I can do myself, and that I never really did. So 
People like me, for example, who are mobility challenged, who maybe are sight impaired and use mobility equipment, it's important for us to have support. It's important to us to have the services and people in place to kind of help us through those difficult times. So, not one to sit on my laurels, I actually started getting better when I accepted help and support from others. I started using hand controls and riding horses and playing golf and just so many amazing things. I had a really good time, and I know that in the process of doing that, I was actually supporting the others who were supporting me. So everywhere I went, I actually noticed that education, awareness, diversity, and inclusion, and those things were actually not enough. So what we did is we kind of flipped things a little bit. So instead of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, we called it DEBI. Disability, equity, inclusion, and belonging. That really helped us to talk about not just being different, but knowing that disability was part of that equation. So we use Debbie now, we do. And so I didn't realize that until I became disabled, but the cool thing is I didn't sit on my laurels. After my disability, I actually entered a Miss Wheelchair USA pageant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a thing, I had no idea. And I had the amazing opportunity to represent Georgia as Miss Wheelchair Georgia, and then go on to be Miss Wheelchair USA, the first Georgian and first woman of color to hold that title, and then eventually Miss Wheelchair International. It was a global platform where I had the opportunity to actually embody what independability actually meant. And I was able to go into different organizations and to support the work that they did for inclusion, especially those with disabilities. Now, things that I knew that I had to do before I even left the house required independability. So the work I had to do happened the moment I left the house. So imagine, if you will, right, in this wheelchair, right, we all know right? Traveling without its challenges is impossible. So imagine, if you will, being in an airport, crowded, late for your flights, sitting next to someone sleeping, snoring loudly. <laughs> it happens to me. So imagine, in my case, in this wheelchair, rolling, rolling down the aisle, right? after a really, really long flight. Now, in this manual wheelchair, it takes a minute, right, for me to gain this momentum. And as I gain this momentum, and this manual chair is just moving quickly, and then there's that one person, you know, just one, that believes that in order to get out of your way, they need to get in your way. <laughs> and so, the wheelchair is like an 18-wheeler, right? Moving at this rate, having to build this momentum. The difference, of course, is that stopping it happens with my hands. So it's a little difficult, but eventually, I really do depend on others to keep that space clear. So instead of jumping in front of me, consider going behind me to allow me the access and the momentum to continue to build as I get to the bathroom. <laughs> Let's talk about the bathroom. So I finally get to the bathroom, and as I roll into this room, there's 20 other stalls. But the one, the only one that I can fit into is taken taken by someone who probably just needed a little bit more room for their luggage. 
And that's great, I get it, I really do. I was literally innocently ignorant until I became disabled. I had no idea. The problem is, that's the only stall that I can fit into. And you know, it's kind of weird for a grown woman with grown kids to walk around with a diaper bag, but I wait. I wait for access to that single room in a sea of other stalls. Independability. So, okay, I wheel out of the bathroom, and I get to the outside of the airport, and there's this great opportunity for me to get across the street. So, there's a little dip in the corner of the sidewalk. Sometimes it has little bumps or buttons on it, if you will. It's usually let yellow, and it's, it's designed for individuals with disabilities and those maybe who are sight impaired to get across the street in a reasonable amount of time. So, I approach that curb cut, and there are others waiting to cross. But instead of jumping off the curb with a step, I literally have to wait in line to cross the curb. Now I get it. Rolling luggage down that curb cut is easy. But it's important for you to look around to see if someone who only has the choice of the curb cut can actually cross the street. Now I literally only have 18 seconds to safely get across that street. Independability. Independability just reminds us that we're dependent on others to give wheelchairs priority whenever possible, and in this case, to make it across the street. It's not a weakness, it's a partnership. And I believe that when we connect with that truth about each other and about what we need, we can truly make a difference, not just in the world, but we're better together. So, the next time you are in a bathroom, if you are crossing a street, or you have a wheelchair kind of barreling down in front of you, it's okay to move out of the way, give us a little bit of room, and recognize that we are now partnering to make sure that I can get out of your way and maybe you can get out of mine. So, that moment, that moment when we can depend on each other and be independently independability and have all those things happening at the same time, I believe that when that happens, we create a partnership and we can understand what independence really is and kind of change the current thought about what that is. Thank you.